Hi, this is Laura Ramsey with the Oracle Technology Network, and I'm here today with Bryn Llewellyn, who is our Distinguished Product Manager for PLSQL at Oracle. How are you doing, Bryn? I'm very well, Laura. How are you? Good. So we're here at Hot Sauce 2016, where you just gave a presentation, where you presented a white paper that you published last October during Oracle Open World. That's right, yes. The paper's called Transforming One Table to Another, SQL or PLSQL. Now that's a rather provocative title. Well, I meant it to be provocative, yes. I chose it especially to wind up Graham Wood, actually. <laughs> but really, it's an homage to a mantra that is always associated with Tom Kite. Mm. He's famous for saying, if you can do it in SQL, then do so. Only if you cannot, do it in PLSQL. Mm -hmm. And I wanted, first of all, to, to examine that at one crude level and then get down to the detail. The crude thing, which we dismiss in one shot, is that if you're going to get into the database from outside, the only proper way is through a PLSQL sub-program, which puts the context of the mantra. In other words, we're going to be doing our inserts, updates, deletes, our selects out of PLSQL. PLSQL is there, inevitably. Mm -hmm. But then up to the detail, the question is, is it always the case that one single SQL statement will solve your problem within the PLSQL, or are there cases where maybe a bit more is required? Now, when you started looking into this, you had an interesting interaction with Jonathan Lewis where you were testing this and discussing it with him. Yes, there's a bit of a background story. First of all, I, I happened to come across a problem which um, I had to solve, which did indeed involve starting with one table and doing some computations and producing some output to another table. Mm -hmm. And it seemed at first that the only way to solve it was to do a lot of the logic in PLSQL. And I was quite happy with this outcome, and I produced a solution, and it worked fine. And doing that and talking about it with colleagues, I thought, wow, this is a perfect um, vehicle for a talk because it shows that that mantra does have its limits. Mm -hmm. And then, in fact, at a conference in Israel, it was the Israel Oracle User Group, mm -hmm. I was talking to Jonathan Lewis about this idea and being a little bit, you know, over zealous about how well it had come out. And he told me, no, 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 that's rubbish. Of course you can solve that in SQL. I'll show you now. And, and he did. He stepped right into the cursor and showed you. Yes, he did. He nipped up to his room, wrote a piece of SQL, came back down, and there it was. But he did say, um, bless him, that it's, it was very slow. He knew that. But it just illustrated the point that my basic notion that you couldn't solve that kind of tricky computation problem in question in SQL was wrong. Um, and then he said, well, give me a bit longer and I'll, I'll do it properly now so that it's fast as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. At one point he crowdsourced this thing and suddenly you had lots of ideas coming from all over the world. Well, that was it. He, he soon realized that he'd um, got other work to do and less, <laughs> you know, less time to care about me than he first thought. Mm -hmm. So he did post his um, solution and explained what the problem was on um, OTN, on one of the forums there and mentioned the fact that he hadn't seen how to get a quick solution to it. And of course, that attracted the interest of the whole planet. And before we knew where we were, we had, I don't know how many different solutions, some of them huge, some of them producing the wrong results, but there were nuggets among them too. So we will be posting this, uh, this white paper here with the clip of our interview, but give us a little view, a preview into the, some of the conclusions. There's two main conclusions that, um, that the paper really comes to when it comes to using PL SQL. Yes, and by the way, those conclusions only emerged when the whole research was done. And in fact, it was only when I had the perfect SQL solution in my hands too, which came from um, somebody called Stu Ashton, um, uh, uh, eager blogger and Twitterer. And um, he puzzled away on this problem many times and produced many inter iterations. And his final solution is really elegant and really fast. Mm -hmm. So when everything was in place, then I was able to draw the conclusions that I did. Mm -hmm. um, one of them was not so much a conclusion as the assertion that we started with, that the whole context of this work was um, how to implement a PLSQL sub-program whose purpose was to do the task mm -hmm. where indeed now we knew that it could be implemented inside itself with a single SQL statement or it could alternatively be implemented by, um, you know, not too elaborate 
ordinary if then else logic in pale sequel. Um, and the conclusion from all that lot was um, rather subtle, but it, one thing was crystal clear, and that is that Stu's solution was not at all obvious. It was not like how you join imp and depth, for example, and he produced it using the same intellectual skills as anyone uses when they write any program in any language. In other words, this idea that SQL is quite simply a declarative scheme where you describe, as if there's only one way to describe it, what you want, and then the system does it for you, that has its limits. And um, the choice of solution, ultimately, um, isn't clear at all. Um, different people would favor different solutions. Obviously, performance is part of it, but when they come out at par, then the um, decisions are based on much softer things, like how easy it is to understand, how confident that you can, can you be that it's correct, that sort of thing. So the it's a skill set. It's really a continuum of a skill set, right? Yes. Well, that was the major point. Thank you for reminding me about that. That I have been trying to say as enthusiastically as I can that um, a distinction that people sometimes make between the skills you need to do PL SQL and the skills you need to do SQL is completely artificial and counterproductive. And rather, it would be far, 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 far better to see PL SQL and SQL as just a continuum and to think that when you start decomposing your top-level sub-program, how you got into the database, then you're writing it in subroutines, some of which you implement as SQL statements and others of which you implement as ordinary if-then-else subprograms in straight PL SQL. Well, thank you very much for giving us a little bit of time today, Bryn. I'm going to post this article with your white paper here on the YouTube channel. And um, it was just great talking with you. Thank you very much. Bye now.